John here. Um, today is uh, Monday, the uh, 5th of uh, June 2017. I'm just on a point here with the um, Whakameninga flag um, in Waitangi. There's some discussions going on up there. And um, Manahi um, Parapara Mauhini has uh, sent me um, um, a document for the uh, war um, um, I'll read it out here, the war not on He Whakaputanga New Zealand Land Wars the government is uh, organising with Ngāti Hine in Pita Paraoni uh, to try and steal this flag they've got a job on their hands to try and do that to pull the wall over the eyes of New Zealand and the um, Maori themselves. Uh, it's been going on too long, and I've been with Mohi Manukau for so many years now, over 20 years, um, going over these things that no one was listening to him. I just will explain uh, as much as I can uh, of what he said to me and how the whole land title structure works in commercial contracts uh, that um, he was familiar with in the courts. He worked with his uh, grandfather, um, John Rogan, in Helensville. This is where all the titles were put together for Auckland, uh, the Manukau titles, straight to England. <coughs> i just say it this way. I'm doing the titles for the Manukau Moriori um, chief, Te Rewaikato Whareherehere Manukau. This, the title's been set up in Scotland with the Freemasons there in Edinburgh and the Manukau Company. That's what I'm going on with this flag. This flag was designed around that um, uh, in mind uh, with the uh, way the eight-point star is on the flag and also if on, you see I've gone and claimed it here, right there and claimed the eight-point star with the seal of King William IV and his Admiralty ship in the background behind him on his horse and his crown there. That's our title with the four corners of the earth. This is the part that not many Maoris can understand how that works commercially in their favour. Now, because they're being colonised by the New South Wales government, and the Pākehā white men from there, the pirates I call them, it's always been like that all these years and Mui was trying to tell them that's not the way to go. And he started off the Confederation uh, in 18, uh, 1985 uh, before the 1986 constitution was uh, put together with Sue Nakora in the Labour government, uh, Sir Geoffrey Palmer. Um, fashioned all of that around the Maori land court titles. Uh, so they were still playing around with this Rogan's native titles that was put together with the Manukau's in Helensville. I've spent a lot of time in Helensville where all the Pākehās mixed up in Ngāti Whātua have pulled the titles over to Ngā, Ngā, Ngāpui from the Ngāti Whātua themselves. It's so mixed up that um, everybody trod on, uh, trod on each other's toes. Machi Tarawa from uh, Te Arawa and Mohi Manaka from his Moriori and um, also the other ones, um, um, Dick uh, Rihari, um, uh, Kake. And uh, these are people who I spent a lot of time with and um, <coughs> also Jo um, Wihongi at her home I was in those meetings with the Confederation of Chiefs and on the 1835 side and I've always suspected all along that it was going down the wrong path but no one's going to listen. They'll just go and keep going and keep going with the 1835 and the, 18, and the 1840 Te Tiriti and Tiriti of Waitangi. That's so mixed up that it was designed that way to confuse Maori themselves. And there will not be any um, let up in it because the government here 
legislated the 1835 Declaration of Independence side of this flag out and replaced it with the 1840 treaty. Now that's if they want to make the the 1835 Hefaka flag work, you'd have to go and get it back off the crown in Wellington. That that crown and the Maori iwi crown that's trying to steal it for themselves. They've been stealing it all these years. And I sat there and watched them with Moi Manukau. What can you do about it? Because no one was listening to him or me. And right up to now, I'm still carrying that burden of his uh, all the way to, to Britain to fix it up on that end. Uh, now, it works like this. I said this in the Titi Marae. I think people were listening. There's two sides of this flag. There's the 1834, the 1831, and the 1835 side of the flag. Now, the 1835, you can't go back further than that because that's what they're doing at Waitangi. I told Kingi, if you stay with the 1835, you're stuck to the 1840 on that contract with New South Wales government and Queen Elizabeth II, who's gone. You're on your own, sailing in the middle of the ocean with no queen or bora. There's nothing, there's nothing holding it up, legally. And on the 1834 side, on the other side of this flag, is a declaration of war flag, just what Machu Tarawa was saying all along, to declare war. And so it's a state of emergency to take the country back. And that's what we're doing here as Paramount Chiefs. <clears throat> to take all this country back, one shot, with the declaration of war flag. What do you think they use it for, for conquering other countries? They're using this flag because the Queen gets the consent from these cheeky iwi Maoris in Waitangi Marae. Peter Peroni and all his ratbags. I call them ratbags because they're the pirates with the surnames from Australia, New South Wales government. That's second hand. They're second hand. And they haven't even got their own flag of their own, apart from hiding under this one with that British ship over there that's got nothing to do with them. All those Maoris over there, nothing to do with them. Absolutely nothing. It's not your contract. You've got your own contract, Peter Peroni, and you've got your own contract, all the Hapus up north that are pushing the 1835 Declaration of Independence flag. You've got a contract with the Queen. You've got to stick with her and get all your money back out of her, which is going to be impossible because it's a broken contract. It's got no end date on the 1840 or the There's no end date on it. It's illegal to go around signing everybody around the country <clears throat> between two people, the Queen and these Maoris. And they go around collecting all the signatures up right through the year. That's not a contract. It's not a contract. It doesn't work like that. I've been working with contracts all my life. And it doesn't work like that between two people, two parties, two party contract. Not a three party, not a four party, six party, twenty party, hundred and so party. And that's where the confusion lies. Okay, all I want to say to you is that <coughs> No matter how long, just 183 years, this flag has been flying on the 1834 side. If you take away 1834, 20th of March, away from 2017, you'll come out with 183 years. They've done nothing with it. And we've known for over 20 years, Mohi Manigo and, and myself, we knew that there was commerce behind it. And that's the part they've missed because they didn't like commerce or banks or crooked people on the pirate side. They've turned you into pirates. Those Maoris, iwi, have turned you into pirates, the citizens of this country. That's why you pay up. You, you have to pay up because that's their law. That's their law. You pay up on that side of the contract. You can't mix the two contracts. The King's contract is with Te Rawaikato Wharaherehere Manukau and not Hongiheka. You see? This is what I know. This is why nobody knows it. I'm telling you this because no one can prove it is wrong. 
I've got this from William Monaco in writing. Right? He knows what and how it works with that title, the Monaco land title. Okay? So that's what the British are going on. The Australian and New Zealand government goes on Maori's title, which is really nothing to do with the Maori themselves, because the Maori and its documents, contracts, are owned by the Crown Corporation, Bill English and John Key and their banks. It doesn't belong to Maoris. Maori got no ownership of it. And the titles and the shares in the Maori Land Court <coughs> really belongs to the Crown. There's nothing, no ownership in it. They only got occupation titles, right? The real titles is with the Paramounts in England. That's why we're going there to get the real titles, right? Because stand there and say, we're here now, with the right surnames. You can't put dodgy surnames on these documents, okay? That's why you're having so much trouble with Maori lands. Because it's got all sorts of funny looking names all over it that you can't find where they come from. Right? It's easy to determine which is real and which is not. You get a Manukau name or a Parapara name, you can't go and bullshit it. You can't change it because it's stuck to the land. And it says, I was here on the birth certificates. Right? If you go into the birth certificates, I've put the Manukau's birth certificates, you won't find anybody with those birth certificates anywhere. Those are the birth of the Admiralty title on these lands. You see? From Britain, not from Australia, from Britain. And so we're going on British law and not the laws here. See? We're allowed to do that. That's why nobody's getting in my row when it comes to land issues and law. It's in my family, right? Okay, now what I'm going to do is read this um, <coughs> uh, document out that Tick, um, Henny Fuddy sent out to the uh, people who are uh, wanting to go online. I'm going to put it on my Facebook site and on this video as citation evidence for them. Um, I'm just showing what I'm doing and make it transparent enough for them to see I'm doing the outside of the flag, which is them anyway a roundabout way and they've got to address their Queen issues and their Whakaputanga issues with the flag that's got no mana, no legal status, no authority to go anywhere, no protection, no nothing because the government took it out for themselves. You'll have to go back to the government and get that flag back for yourselves but on the other side of the flag we're flying this flag from British end right through the world. Okay. One is a home grown up the road, that's the 1835. The other is the 1834, which is flying around the world at the moment online. Okay, I've got these all set up with Moi Manukau long ago. Okay, I'm going to read this um, um, notice out. Ngā uri o ngā rangatira o te whakaputanga. Okay, so it's got the Gmail there. And the 31st of May 2017. Tēnā koutou katoa. We write to you with grave concerns regarding the appointment to commemorate the New Zealand land wars on the 28th of October 2017. As you're all aware, the 28th of October of each calendar year is a day of significance of the signing of a whakaputanga between the Confederation of Chiefs and the British Crown, based on the established covenant between Hongi Hika and George IV in 1831. To have the New Zealand land wars commemorated on the 28th of October contravenes Article 3 of He Whakaputanga and it's significant to our Maori world view. This day must be dedicated to He Whakaputanga 1835. Ngāpui, Ngā Arangatira and others around the country who signed later were proclaiming the authority and intent of Te Whakameninga or Ngā Hapu or Nu Te Reni <clears throat> the General Assembly of Hapu Rangatira of New Zealand to move forward into a new future as an international emerging nation while still controlling their own changes. Te Whakamininga o Ngā Hapu o New Tireni began meeting in the early 1800s which helped shape Te Whakaputanga and continued meeting through and beyond the signing of Te Tiriti o Waitangi. Importantly, 
a whakaputanga was recognized as a declaration of independence, hence the declaration of sovereignty, by a number of the most influential world powers of the time. <clears throat> the intentions of Ngāpui Rangatera in signing he whakaputanga can be summarised as follows. Ko te kingitanga, ko te mana ki te wenua. Proclaiming their sovereignty to the international world. Proclaiming the sovereign state te rangatera tanga of their land. Asserting their status as the highest authority Nā tino rangateratanga in the lands covered by their proclamation. Proclam proclaiming their land to be a securely governed, peaceful and prosperous state. He whenua rangatira. Declaring their unity and collective authority in their lands except as appointed and directed by them. Inviting hapu south of Hauraki line to join Te Whakamininga, hapu north of that could belong to Te Whakamininga as of right. Building on the alliance with the British Crown that began with Hongihika and other tūpuna. Affirming in a written document the covenant their tūpuna had formed face to face with George IV and William IV thanking the British monarch for agreement to their sovereign flag, assuring the king that they would assuring the king that they would continue to offer protection to British people living on their land and coming to trade with them. Asking the British monarch for support in the international emergence of their state and his protection in any attempts to undermine their sovereignty. Advancing their international trade through a closer alliance with the British. In November 2014, the Waitangi Tribunal, Bunal, Waitangi Tribunal reaffirmed what we have always said, Ngā Pui did not cede sovereignty to the British Crown. As you can imagine, Ngā Pui has an enormous task ahead of us to educate not only ourselves, but the rest of the country on the importance of Te Whakamininga and he whakaputanga. It will be a long road for both Māori and Pākehā. We do not envisage it being a burden, but one of two peoples moving together as one to achieve a common outcome. We ask that you consider using the 28th of October to commemorate the New Zealand Wars and perhaps appoint Good Friday as a more suitable date considering the role Christianity played during colonisation resulting in war. Signatures accompanying this communication are those of Ngā Uri, descendants to Rangatera who signed He Whakaputanga, who also feel strongly about this kōpapa. Now there's some few signatures there, and Willie Pater looks like he's organised this with Mike Harris and um, um, Hinewhare Um So good on them for doing that and uh, bringing the people together as much as they can behind the flag and it is very important to get that right um, so um, there's a notice here uh, not on he whakaputanga day New Zealand land wars hui with kingi taurua on friday ngā matua manahi um, that's uh, 2nd of June 2017, 4pm sent. Okay, so um, that was what um, Manahi sent to me with all the emails from everybody the notice was sent to. So I'm sending you a notice with this video of my interpretation of the flag and what I think should be done, but um, we're going ahead anyway um, after the meeting we had on the 20th of May up in Titi Marae and treating it as Paramount Chiefs um, 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 itinerary to go to Westminster to claim the Manukau Moriori land title. Okay, that's the only name on it. There's nobody else's name from here on it. 
and um, Hungi Hika wasn't interested in signing documents. He wanted the muskets to shoot everybody off the land so that he became the chief of um, the lands themselves. He's fighting for his land back. Nothing wrong with that, but I'm talking about commercial contracts with the signing of the documents by Tira Waikato Wharehere Manukau, the brains behind the land title in the Manukau Company, registered in Edinburgh, Scotland, as transfer of land titles and sold lands here before 1830. Okay, these lands were being sold before 1830 without any authority here, but the British were selling it through the Admiralty and the Magistrate Court and the Magistrate himself, the captain of the ship of Navy, British Navy, carried that title of Magistrate to sell the lands directly to Britain, okay, with any Maoris or any natives or anybody for that matter. They had the right to sell it under the King. Now, in this um, article, this notice that was sent out, I just saw that, um, where is it now? Um, oh gosh, I've lost it again. I'll just try and find, oh gosh. I always do this with people, strange people who send things to me, and I never get to find it anywhere. Okay, here in this notice, it's got here. Look, listen. In the first part of it, it says, As you are aware, the 28th of October of every calendar year is a day of significance of the signing of Hefakaputanga between the Confederation of Chiefs and the British Crown, based on the established covenant between Hongi Heka and George IV in 1831. George IV wasn't a king in 1831, it was King William IV from 1830 to 1837. 1831 was when the first Church of England, St Mary's Church, stuck it on my land in Tiki Tiki and put the birth certificates, birth certificates together with King William as bonds on the stock market. That's where they first sold us, my family in this country. Those are the titles to the land, believe it or not. The flag titles came later in 1834 as British titles. You can't take the British out of it. You can't override any British title anywhere in the world, including America, including the Philippines, where the gold is stuck under the land. Duterte, President Rodriguez Duterte, is using martial law in his country to seize any authority on the land back into his power, but that's British law, that's this flag's law he's using. So we're going to put that straight over the top of him to protect him and the gold that's stuck in there that belongs to the flag. Okay, the Admiralty Law, the Magistrate Court, and the Declaration of War Flag. That's the only war flag in the world that I'm talking about that Maori doesn't see that side of business that it's put there for, right? The chiefs knew something like that was going to happen and they wanted their cut out of it, but the Maoris got mixed up with the Pakeas in Australia, the, the thugs, and away they went, right? You can see who was selling the land, the thugs from Sydney, Australia. Now, Hongi Heka is wrong to have put him there with King George IV. He was dead, gone. He was gone. He wasn't anywhere there in 1830. It was King William IV that put the title together with Tira Waikato, Wharehere Manukau, that's been left off the titles here up north. <coughs> okay? Refa Refa Manukau was up there with Pomare selling land, and he came back to Auckland selling land here too. The documents are there, the proof is there. You can't get past that. You can't get past that. Now who you left Tira Waikato out and put his name as Rewa. He's Refa Refa on the titles straight to Clinton, selling the land in Auckland. Right? He had the right to sell it as a Manukau, straight from Britain. 
That's what Monica, Mohi Monica, didn't want to tell anybody. You see, because he's amassed his fortunes over there with the Freemasons, right? His fortunes are still there. Not even his family can touch it. It belongs to the business that I'm running. Okay, so I'm saying these things because no one, no one can contest that. It's already online for you to see. And so here, the, um, the flag itself, uh, the 1835 flag, we spent more time in the Confederation than anybody that's up there. I've spent more years in the Confederation with this flag in the 1835. I've never seen any of you there that are talking about it. I've never seen anybody there when I've been there with Delwi Hongi and... Um, Tess Davis and them, and Machi Karawa, uh, Richard Kahe, and uh, Hare Utsutonga, all those people, I was with them. And a few other Pakeas that I can't think of their names, but they were there too. There's one in particular from Tauranga that Kingy was saying on the video with me that he knew me. I can't think of his name, but it'll come to me one day. I knew all those ones down there and <clears throat> around the country who, who came to these meetings whenever they could with Mohi Manukau at Del Wihogi's place. So I was taking notes for Mohi Manukau all the time. I've videoed him, I've, I've gone and drove him around all over the place for six years straight to mark out all the country that he said there's all the burial grounds that where all his people were killed. But this is the overlying factor here. It's that <clears throat> Whatever I put online is for the benefit of everyone who is supposed to be getting their cut out of the revenue that's going into the pockets of John Key and their elite families and Bill English and the, all the people working for the Crown in the islands and Samoa. Right? Samoa, he's been made a chief over there, Bill English. You see, they're wobbling around and they're going to get knocked off with this flag by just a few of us that know what to do with it. Unfortunately, um, Bundy is listening to me and uh, also Money, And they know about Mohi Manukau and what he was doing um, at the time in the Kaipara. They know, but they don't want to talk about it because it's all Pākehā in it. And that's what Mohi was. He was with the Pākehās to fashion out the titles on the land and sell it because no one was going to listen to what Mohi said. Okay, so that's all his documents are here. I've got everything of his and his carvings and everything, and I'm going to explain the carvings and the four pillars. See, he's following the pillars of society and the Freemasons and all those symbols and everything like that, which for me doesn't mean a thing for me, just the commerce. I'm saying whose land? Who is who? <coughs> where did you come from? And where are you going to? And how are you going to survive if this isn't in place and fixed? All right. So I'm saying to the um, confederation that's there, now it's, it's lost its way. The only one that's proficient in the confederation is uh, Sue Nikora. And blow me, I can't think of anybody else um, other than Cock Gregory and his father uh, uh, Bruce Gregory was uh, very much in all of that but they weren't as right into it as um, was um, Dan Davis and Akarana uh, Amoto uh, Akarana that's his name um, but he was working inside the um, Rewati Marae in, in um, Kaipara and so Mohis told me all about Every one of them. I know their backgrounds. I know their homes. I know where everyone lives up there in the Kaipras, in Dargaville, across in Rafiti, in um, um, Rev, Rewiti, um, um, and um, Paihia, the Bay of Islands. I know all the lands where Mohi uh, and his ancestors trot around, go for on, on forever, and down south in. in uh, Ratana. Now, I'm not a Ratana uh, but as such, but they're political people and 
they still haven't got anywhere. No one's got anywhere because they don't have the title. They don't have any information to go with the titles. These things, I put the, I bound these all up. All the documents I've put together in fashion, the titles for the British, when we go to Britain, all these documents will be going with all the books over here. All those books you see there, there's some there, and there's some behind the couch there, and some, some over there, all over the place. And it's full up with these books and everything. But I put all these books together of all the titles um, that uh, me and Mohi went through. And uh, it's got the sign, see, on Titi Marae and the Marais in Auckland. All the documents I put together have been signed by even Nazi Pro, Rangiti Ekwa Kraka, right? They're all, they're all being certified as correct. So this, this document is a title, one of, a title of many titles that we have put together over the years and gone through a hell of a lot to um, make sure we got our facts right. And, um, and um, this is the Cook Street one, see, this book here, just put together, there's a few books put together for Cook Street, just telling them it's a Manukau land, and they just ignore it, not anymore. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ignore these anymore because it's gonna come and take it off you. Because of the fraudness of this Cook Street there, look. I'm just telling you, no one is proficient enough with real estate and knowing how it works. And so you've got King William IV's acts in here that we're going on. You see all the acts here of King William IV that um is for Cook Street. 1833, 1834. Yeah, the acts of 1833, 1834. Right? And King William there, look, with the gold. That's all our business. You see? This is what we're meant to be doing, not moaning our heads off, like what they're doing. And then you've got King William's, all his acts. There's only 19 pages of acts, and that's it. In 1830 to 1837, 70 years of acts in 19 A4 pages. You don't have to go anywhere else. We've got all the X in here. I can pull one of them out anywhere and stick it on someone. Right? So you've got signatures all over the place. These are meetings after meetings in the Confederation. The real Confederation. I never saw any of you there. Because you didn't belong to it. And John Rogan, letters here, look. For those lands in the Cobra. 15th of September 1875, the deed, the deed of the Auckland titles, the first Auckland titles. This is what I'm specialising in. Right? And the, and the crooked document here with the receipt for Cook Street that was sold on the road, that was crooked. That, 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 that'll, that'll hang them. These acts in here will hang them. See? Section 145 Land Transfer Act. There. If you want to know about real estate, you can come to this school and you'll learn pretty fast how this works. I had to do this to protect our lands. Because it doesn't belong to anybody. It belongs to the Paramount Chiefs. That's how it works. Paramount Chief is a king. I'm telling King Itoto, <clears throat> he'll be exhausted before long waiting to get to England. He's saying, come on, hurry up. That's what the old fellow said to to, to tell him to tell me to hurry up. Well, I'm still trying to hurry. I've got to make the money myself too. Or borrow it from somebody. So soon, of course, uh, I'm going to come to the party. Well, that's good because I can only go as fast as my little legs can go without getting a heart attack. And so, um, so there, that, 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 I'm just saying, that's just one of many books and all the books over there that are bound up. Now this one here is the government that was put together for the Confederation. See? This, this is what they're talking about. He whaka putanga o te rangateratanga o mutiriri. Look, they don't, no one has this book. It's here. Everything that they needed to do, you won't find anywhere because this is a Manukau title in England. It's been put together from there, not from here. See? How, how the hell would they know where to start from? 
how the hell does all this Declaration of Independence stuff? Nobody's got this. I can't tell them because I know everything back to front in the Confederation. And there they are talking about the flag. They haven't, they haven't got the rest of it. You can't make a title if you've got little bits and pieces. Right? Sovereign Council of Chiefs and Heads of Hapu. <coughs> all the instructions how to run a government. I'll tell you what. We're running a Commonwealth government of the world. Not just here. The whole world. Online. It's ready to go. Ready to go. Now, this is... this. If, everything, I'm telling you, everything is in here. The fuck up and everything. To kick off a native government. Why should I teach anybody? Because it goes in one ear, the other, and they only give me 10 minutes to talk. Right? Now, I've got 10 minutes to talk about everything that I'm doing online with, in this book that'll crush this whole country and the world into one little block of ice. Right? <clears throat> Regional States Parliamentary Standing Orders. Look, everything's in here. This is confederation stuff, not not um, incorporation stuff. This is straight to England and straight around the world. In this, right? You can't you can't do this. You can't do nothing. And I'm I'm talking on that level. I can't find anybody can can match that. The only person that can is Sue in the court. That's it. She's the closest one that can ever ever understand any of this because she was in the confederation with Modi. Monica. So that's that, <coughs> and that's the writ warrant. So this this is the beast that'll capture them. There's Pomari there and Clinton, the two main buyer here, buyer, part here, seller, Maori. Okay? Native. Pomari. He sold the land with Terawaka for Farahere, sold it from England. He didn't sell it here, he sold it from England. And that's the 1831 church. You see that church in Tikitiki? -tiki? That's my title, to talk like this, to the cows come in. Okay? There it is there. There it is there. Right there. That's the title to the birth certificate instrument that's worth more than anything in this world. You can forget about the rest, the land and everything else. The birth certificate takes precedence over everything that they've made money out of you. And that's the carving. I'm going to talk about that today. I just wanted to clear this matter up today. That's the whakapapa of Mohi Manaka and the Wainua family and the Rogan, Rogan family and the four, um, four, um, four pillars, four main tribes of this country. Okay, so there's, there's more in-depth stuff here you'll, you'll never find anywhere else in this world. You'll never find anything that can match it, ever. That's my church in Tiki Tiki, there, with Reverend Wano and Reverend Ka, K-A-A, -A, or C-A-R-R. -R. That's the first birth certificate in the well that went on the stock market in New York, York with King William IV in 1830, 1831. Okay, you got that? That's the title. Don't argue because it's right, and I don't want to argue about it. So that's uh, really what I want to say about this um, uh, notice uh, from Manahi. I'm going to uh, send the um, itinerary for four of us to go to Westminster, and you'll see the breakdown of the costs over one million. And um, I really had a 4.2 million budget to go around and do everything I wanted to do in six weeks there. That's how much it was going to cost for everything I was going to set up. That's the second time around I'm doing this from uh, 2012 to go back to England, set up the office, set up set up the bank, set up the everything uh, virtually by myself um, because all the time I've planned it and not to fail. And so far so good. It's going okay. <clears throat> so it's just a matter of um, supporting each other up north. Um, I'll always maintain that um, there's someone better than me talking. I'll shut my mouth and stand out of the way and wait for it to collapse. And that's what always happens. I always know it comes to nothing. 
what they do because they don't have all the bits and pieces together to make up a complete, true, perfected title to the land they're standing on. They're only talking about bits here and bits there and bits there and bits there. The Queen or the King owns the whole island. That's what they say until you can take it off them somehow or another. It's not going to happen overnight because they've got the money out of it and they've got away with it. <clears throat> not anymore. I'm going to make sure that we um, put this across uh, with Kingi. On, there's a meeting coming up in uh, the 14th of uh, July. We should be gone by the 15th, Kingi, watching this video. And um, Bundy. Um, well, Bundy, um, Sue doesn't think you should go with me. I'll decide that when the time comes, but because she's lending me the money, I can get my own money, but I'll take her money and give her money back when I get some money. I just need that money to bang the whole lot off and it just take all off. I won't be standing around anymore. I'll be busy because a lot of people are waiting for me and for uh, things to happen in the right sense of the word. Uh, some justice back in the system that's corrupted and fraud at the moment. Um, so um, I'll send this out with this video and also the writ warrant. I'll put the writ warrant in the email with the uh, itinerary so that the people who are up north having their meetings for this flag to save it from this uh, crown stealing it. Uh, for their um, um, use and they have no authority to use that flag. They have no authority to even talk about it, let alone do anything commercial with it because they're breaking the law on our contract. There's two contracts running on that flag, the 1835 which has got no contract left because the 1840 has taken over that contract, Kingi, under the Queen. The Queen has abandoned ship and left the Maori standing you got no queen, I'm telling you, you've got no queen. You can forget about her on your documents. Anything you're talking about the queen is not going to come back. She's not coming back. She's gone into the EU Parliament, gone back to Nazi land, and leaving it up to the Muslims to go and create havoc and try and bury all her fraud path. No, Moa is there to rake it all out and bankrupt her. Bankrupt everybody inside with this flag. Watch what happens. And uh, also, um, um, <clears throat> uh, Kingi, um, we're going to uh, make sure that um, um, Sue is um, well informed on what uh, our movements are for her and her government. Somebody's got to have a government here if they want to. There's a government, where I don't want to get rid of the government in Wellington, I'm going to bleed them to death and make them pay up, each one of them, and pull them out one by one. You're on notice, all of you, you can't carry on like that, defrauding the public of New Zealand. You can't keep going on because this flag will stop you, dead in your tracks. Okay, once these Paramount Chiefs get their mojo back, they will be screaming, and the marshals, or not the marshals, we don't want the marshals, just the sheriffs, okay, the sheriffs will be doing the job, we don't need anybody else, just the sheriffs, and the um, paramount, that's it, and forget about everything else, we'll just hire the right people to do the right job, no muck around, we'll do all the, all the paying everybody out of what we recover, from the debtors. Okay, so that's all I want to say with uh, not being able to go up to the meeting up north because I'm preparing to go to England um, with these uh, chiefs and uh, they know their rightful uh, place and I'm hoping that um, Hiriwini Karaka will go or Selwyn Clark will go and he'll have to have a doctor with him and us as well if he goes. It'd be beneficial if he did go, but if he didn't want to go, well, he said he's too old to go. Uh, so that's okay. That's, well, he'll endorse the documents as he has already signed, King Ear has signed, 
Bundy has signed and Manahi has signed and I've signed. That's it. They're ready to go. All I have to do is get the money to go. I just need the one million to get cranked up and it'll be in the billions straight after that. I'll assure you of once you look at the itinerary and the uh, budget, it's running right up where it should be with this flag. This flag is no use sitting around going up and down the road. It's not meant to go up and down the road crying about things. And this government here is playing around with it. They're going to get slammed up with it. Watch what happens when you play around with a king and a Maui statue memorial. It's going to bite you very hard. So that's about all I want to say, um, other than um, I've got the uh, um, Rick Warren, um, not the Rick Warren, I've got the um, itinerary looking better now. It's in PDF form. I've managed to do that after playing around with the Excel. There it is there. Okay, so that's our budget. That's our expenses to go to England for the 13 days for the uh, Chiefs for four people. <coughs> okay, so there's the leftover I've got, 662970 That's how much I've got left to play around with. I don't want to spend it. I just want to leave it there in reserve because we've got 4.2 million all together with all what I want to buy. And that there's the list of everything here with the tidal energy turbines. That's going to head off. We just need to pay the shares, pay the engineers, pay in, in uh, Denmark, pay the hydrogen people, pay everything I've set up, and it's gone. It's gone. So there's all the budgets there. 3.902 million plus the 330 million, 330,000 comes to about 4.2 million dollars. This, if I took that figure into account, it would give us a jumbo, um, a Boeing 24-seater um, VIP aircraft to fly around the world, and I'll make sure it's it, it can get one shot hit with extra fuel tanks and less seats, pull our seats out and put extra tanks in to get around quick, and just limited to uh, 12, 13 passengers. Uh, so there we go, that's what it looks like, and depart on the 15th of July right there. If we can get this, uh, what uh, Sue has promised me, uh, one million dollars, uh, which is uh, um, um, rather um, small in, in, in to the scale of this project and everything. Uh, however, I'm not bleating about it, and it'll 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 make us uh, kick off, and um, we'll have um, no trouble to pay it back. Uh, to take four Paramount chiefs to London to claim the Manukau company there uh, in um, Edinburgh, Scotland, Moriori Manukau commercial land ownership title there. That's sitting there. What I'm doing myself is, is going in on his behalf for his um, executor um, as his administrator to his um, inheritance that belongs. I'm, I'm getting it back <coughs> for the, not for the confederation of chiefs he was in, but for the whole world because it's gone out from what it used to be. The Confederation is limited to only New Zealand portion of the overall Commonwealth countries of the world where the flag went and where the Queen took it. Financial plan budget for New Zealand, Paramount Chiefs, Commercial Headquarters, Cook Street, Auckland. We're going to take over that property and build it straight up. We've got the Chinese to contract. They don't need... Um, water or, or concrete cement, everything's made in uh, China and shipped out, the whole building is shipped out and put together like Lego. Uh, so that's not a problem, I just get the figure in the contract and sign it and that's the end of that and write the pound note against Bill English and his head and Bailey's real estate and everybody else that owes us money, though I just write it up against them. Okay, page six, there we go, the total expenses, 337030 dollars and that's what it looks like on that scale we're in big figures here with the military in Britain we're going to pay the military to recover all the debt 20 billion that's what 
I'll write that straight out against the levy debtors to pay the British military to recover all the debt, 970 million trillion trillion pound notes and that's the end of that. You see, that's how you do it in commerce. I learned a lot from Mohi Manikau and um, with our family being on that side of the Rogans, that's brushed off on me and what I do with real estate and land is uh, <coughs> on that level in Britain. Okay, so that's about it. Um, what else can I say? I'll just put the video, this video, together with this uh, itinerary and the writ warrant here so that it goes to those people. It looks like it's about 30 or 40 people on their emails sent to you. And I just want to make sure it got to Bundy, uh, Waitai and uh, Manahi, um, Parapara Mohini, and also to um, <coughs> um, King Itaurua. Um, Chief King Itaurua will be back in Auckland today. And I'll try and get to talk to him um, and, and explain a bit more how this works. Now, it's all that's left to do is get $1 million into my bank account and the billions will fall out of the sky and everybody live happily ever after. And the end of this Queen nonsense, the Rothschilds nonsense, the IMF's nonsense, um, Bill English and John Key's nonsense, the Church and State's nonsense, the paedophiles nonsense, all the things the Queen invented and the Popes, all the bad things in the Church is coming to a quick end, the end of Israel and their bleeding, killing, all that thuggery stuff is this flag is meant to be to stop them. It's a pirate flag. It's a declaration of war flag. We declare war on all the whole lot of you and take the people in to consume you and destroy you with the people. That's what this flag's for. It's a king's common law people flag. Okay, got that? See you later. Bye. Have a nice day.